Andre Chad Perenzi is an HIV-positive Australian man. He found out he was HIV-positive in September of 1998. He was already living with a woman with whom he had two children, here represented by Nancy Kerrigan. They were married in November of 1998. He did not share his diagnosis with his new wife and the mother of his children. He separated from her in 2000, at which time he began cohabitating with another woman, also a mother of two children, here represented by Tanya Harding. In 2001, Perenzi was hospitalized with what he falsely claimed to be cancer, and a chance encounter in the waiting room between the new girlfriend and Perenzi's sister led to a revelation about Perenzi's HIV status. The new girlfriend got herself tested and came up positive for HIV. Perenzi's wife didn't find out about his HIV status until 2003, five years after his diagnosis, when they went to court over custody of their children. There's a third woman, too, that Perenzi had unprotected sex with for a time in 2004, here represented by Christy Yamaguchi. She found out from the wife, and when confronted, Perenzi lied to her as well. She had to confirm his diagnosis with Perenzi's mother, and she subsequently dumped him. Finally, in 2006, Perenzi was arrested, charged, and convicted on three counts of endangering human life. The story would be a sad but tawdry tale, perfect fodder for whatever talk show is the Australian equivalent of Maury Povich or Jerry Springer. But Perenzi appealed the decision to the Australian Supreme Court on the grounds that HIV has not been proven to exist, be sexually transmitted, cause AIDS, or have a valid diagnostic test. You and I might deplore his actions, especially when the wife testified that Perenzi said, quote, I don't give a about making girlfriend too ill. It might in fact make us very angry at his cavalier attitude towards human life. But two people from nearby Perth, Australia, who call themselves the Perth Group, got very excited. They were about to get their day in court. Before we get to that, who are the Perth Group? Well, Perth is the fourth largest city in Australia with a population of 1.6 million people. The Perth Group has two permanent members, both of whom work at the Royal Perth Hospital. They are Eleni Papadopoulos Eliopoulos and Valender F. Turner. Mrs. Papadopoulos Eliopoulos, despite frequently being referred to with the honorific doctor, holds only a bachelor's degree in nuclear physics from the University of Bucharest and is employed as a medical technician testing patients for sensitivity to UV. Dr. Valender Turner is an emergency room physician with a bona fide medical doctorate, but no research lab experience. There are some other floating members of the group, but these two define the group's identity, and I'm going to focus on them. It's important that I note that the Perth group statements do not reflect the views of the Royal Perth Hospital, and their work is not funded or supported by the hospital. The defense lawyers for Perenzi presented these two people as experts on HIV and AIDS. But are they? The judge, Justice Sulon, didn't think so. Mrs. Papadopoulos Eliopoulos has no formal qualifications in medicine, biology, virology, immunology, epidemiology, or any other medical disciplines. She has never treated or been directly involved in clinical trials of any kind relating to any disease. She has not read, or she has chosen to ignore, an enormous volume of recently published material on the diagnosis and treatment of HIV-AIDS. She has been selective in the material upon which she relies. Justice Sulin also found that her qualifications do not provide her with the academic study required to give opinions on medical and scientific matters unrelated to nuclear physics. The judge found that she, Papadopoulos Eliopoulos, is not qualified to express opinions about the existence of HIV, or whether it has been established that it causes AIDS, nor has she expertise to express opinions about whether the virus is transmissible, nor is she qualified to express opinions about the tests that have been developed to diagnose the virus. Regarding Dr. Turner, the judge found that his knowledge of the subject matter is limited to reading. He has no formal qualifications to give expert opinions about the virus. He has no practical experience in the treatment of viral diseases. He has no practical experience in the disciplines of virology, immunology, or epidemiology. He's right. 
Neither of these two has published a substantive paper or presented original experimental evidence. They have written dozens of the scientific equivalent of a letter to the editor, but these are universally ignored. So what are they arguing? They say that HIV hasn't been proven to even exist, and everything else follows from that. Nothing to them about HIV is valid. Research, testing, prevention, treatment, their arguments are mostly about an artificial standard of proof. They say the virus has never been purified to their satisfaction. They claim that there is no evidence of transmission, which really boggles the mind. But behind all these arguments is a hidden agenda. The Perth group are pet theory worshippers. Cult members, really. They subscribe to a variation of a theory that dates back to 1913, called mitotic theory. I won't go into detail, but they ascribe all manner of diseases and disorders to the concentration of ions in a cell, called the redox state, short for reducing oxidizing the chemical terms for gaining or losing an electron. It's not quite woo, but pretty close. Redox is important in the cell. It's the mechanism by which muscles contract, nerves fire, and food is metabolized. But a basic understanding of cellular biology can tell you that it's not responsible for AIDS. I've refuted their assertions in a separate video if anyone is worried that they might have a valid argument. One of their assertions is that if people will just go off their medications and eat a reducing diet, all this AIDS nonsense will just go away. I find the Perth group most disturbing because they have recruited an army of followers through the internet. And once again, poor diet also affects the immune system. So uh, any bona fide AIDS cases that are being found in Africa are likely the cause of those damn skinny malnourished Africans. Conclusion? AIDS is not a viral problem, but more of a behavioral problem, and the treatments for... In America, the HIV test is the mark. Okay? That's the mark. Now, once you have the mark, the only way to get rid of the mark, even a little bit, is to go along with the system and to take the drug this means you're a good boy or you're a good girl. That will help you get rid of the mark, they say. In actuality, it will kill you. As to Andre Chad Perenzi, he was denied a second appeal by a three-court panel and is currently serving nine years, eligible for parole in 2011. I don't know if that's justice or not. I'm sure the woman he infected doesn't think so. But then again, maybe justice will come for him in jail.